Hi everyone. Let's see. Happy Friday. Let's see if anyone joins in. So far, no one has joined in yet. Oh, sorry, I think I had my setting wrong on my setup here. Hang on, guys. Hi everyone. I'm trying. I realized my live setting was off. Um, I had the link unlisted, so I just set it up now. How happy Friday, everyone! So I'm looking down on my laptop. I just fixed it right now. How is everyone doing? It's almost Christmas. If you celebrate Christmas, so yay! I'm trying to log in so I can see the chat because I'm using my phone and most times I don't see my stuff on my phone very well. So I'm going to, I have a bunch of things written down, some questions that I got. So I'll try to answer everything quick. Try to, I always say I try to make this live quick, but most times people don't join in on time. So let's see how it goes. I'm just trying to get situated here, <laughs> guys. Bear with me. It's like I always do this every live. I always say I'm going to be ready, and I'm never ready. Hey, Dainty, how are you? Happy Friday. All right, everyone, I'm going to jump right in because I know everyone wants to get ready for the holidays, celebration, Christmas, everything. All right, so Dainty, you sent me a question. I think you said something about baking soda and lemon. So I got, a few, I got like two questions under the Q&A. Um, hopefully you're warm, everybody, because it's freezing where I am in Texas. It's so cold. I think it's like 28 degrees over here, and we are not used to that type of weather. So I have my hoodie on, <laughs> freezing. So hopefully you guys are staying warm. Um, so anyway, so yeah, Dainty, I got your question. So actually, one of the videos I posted, I, you know, I do have, actually have dark knuckles too. But what I noticed, um, so Dainty's question, oh, you received your gift? That was fast. Oh, wow. Awesome. I think I sent it off on Monday. Yeah, I sent off the bundle on Monday. Hi, anime. Awesome. I, I, was, I didn't know that, that. I thought we were going to get it next week because shipping is always so slow around the holidays. Um, so I'm just going to jump right in. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the live. Yeah, it's really, really cold. Yeah. So, okay. So somebody had posted. I got a question. Like I said, I, I get questions on 
every, almost every video I've posted on YouTube, I get a question in some shape or form. And to be honest, there are videos I did probably in 2020. Oh, hi, you're in Canada. I know Canada gets cold anime. Awesome. Well, welcome. So, um, yeah, I, it's something that I don't, I don't think people actually realize how much, how many questions I get on a daily basis. And there's just no way to respond to every question because some questions are easy to respond to. Someone might ask, hey, where did you buy this ingredient from? Some questions are easy, but when it's actually, actually formulating questions, I, I just cannot go back and forth. It's just, uh, it's just too much to do that, yeah. Oh my gosh, negative 40 today. Oh my Lord, and I'm complaining it's 28 degrees over here. Oh wow. Yeah, I know Canada gets really cold. Well, stay warm. So uh, I'm just gonna jump in. So Dainty, you had a question about baking soda and lemon. So a lot of times, uh, everybody has different skin types. Some people react to different things. So I usually don't tell people, you know, hey, for sure, try this, it's going to work. Um, somebody had posted a question about if using baking soda and lemon could get rid of dark knuckles. So that was the question. Um, and somebody else actually had posted a qu uh, question on my, a video I did, I think last month. It was a butterfly pea um, wash. Um, so the person had posted on the comments, hey, I noticed you have dark hands or dark knuckles or whatever. And is that because you use natural products? So I've always had, I've had dark ha like knuckles. I think for me, mine got worse because for years, I always would clean my house, like bathrooms and stuff. And I never wore gloves. I never wore gloves. So I know a lot of it is from harsh chemicals. And when I switched over to more of natural plant-based cleaning ingredients it helped but i think that has been a lot of damage so it's slowly getting better but i don't think it has anything to do with and we can see i don't think it has anything to do with um uh, natural products so the person that posted asking I, I mean i don't know that i can say there's a remedy i know when i checked the dermatology blogs and things and even just some DIYs, um, some remedies were lemon, baking soda. Baking soda is not an enlightening ingredient. Baking soda helps to exfoliate your skin, unclog the pores. I think a lot of times it's really dead skin cells that have settled on your, on that part of your body. So I know turmeric helps to light, uh, helps to kind of even out your skin. So I've used turmeric for certain areas of my body that have really cleared up and lightened up. And there are certain areas that have just not lightened up, like my glasses, that area. Um, but everywhere else I've used turmeric has worked. Um, so dainty, I saw a remedy for baking soda, lemon. I saw a remedy for baking soda, sorry, lemon, I think baking soda and turmeric. So I would say try it out and see um, if that helps your dark knuckles. It's kind of hard to recommend. You said I think it helped. Um, somebody else had asked a question about dark eye circles. Oh, sorry, anime, do I have online access? Yeah, uh, I, I, I usually have the link for my online courses in the description box. Usually any of the videos I post, I have the link posted on there. I, right now, I currently have two courses. I have a preservatives workshop that's like two and a half hours long. I think maybe two, a little over two hours. I think two and a half hours long. And then I have a beginner skincare formulating course. So those are the only two courses I have right now. I'm working on two more. Um, they already, everything is recorded. I just haven't finished up uploading to the website that I use. So yeah, the description box, everything is going to be there for the course. I mean, I'll post it here. I think it's, um, Oh God, I'm post I hope I'm posting the right one. <laughs> I'll see the my online worlds. I, uh, I'm not sure. I have to, I'm, I'm trying to think of the website off, off top of my head. Yeah, it's um, dainty. It's always going to fizz. It's normal. Baking soda is going to fizz. Anytime you add anything acidic, 
anything that is acidic to baking soda, it's going to have that fizzing motion. That's, that's just the way it works. Anything added to baking soda will always do that. Layla's mom, I'm not familiar with tranexamic tran acid powder. I've never heard of it. So I'm not, I can't really, I've never heard of that. Uh, mulberry root extra, and I'm not sure what are you, what is the purpose of using those ingredients? What are you trying to achieve? Dainty said, how do you think Americans get shea butter? Mm, I don't know, I don't understand your question. No, the fizzing has nothing to do with lightning. Oh, okay, hyperpigmentation to help with dark spots. Oh, okay, gotcha. Uh, I know mulberry roots is, is known to help. I just have never heard of the, the is it tranic, is it? Transamic acid powder, I don't even know how to pronounce it. I've never heard of it. Um, and the thing with, um, I follow like two dermatologists online. The thing with hyperpigmentation, it is something that is not cured overnight. Um, I think a lot of times we're looking for a quick solution. Um, for example, I have a kojic acid serum I use. I had three spots I was targeting. And one was my, under my nose, where I wear my glasses. One, I had a spot on my thigh, and I think one was on my hand. Those areas lightened up, they cleared up. The one under my nose, barely. So what I understand from the dermatologist, they said certain areas, there are different layers on your skin. So depending on what layer that is, I don't know, I'm just kind of, I'm not really breaking it down the way they did, but the way what I understood was depending on what layer that, um, hyperpigmentation on even skin is in your skin that will determine if that ingredient or whatever will work and there's some hyper hyperpigmentation that will never get cleared up unless you have um, treatment um, I guess some type of laser some type of treatment so it just depends um, shea butter is not naturally grown in the US it is imported all shea butter is imported either from Ghana, Ghana and Nigeria at the, at the largest Export, I don't know, exporters of shea butter to other countries, Ghana and Nigeria. So it is imported, yeah. So dark, uh, I think dark circles, somebody had asked a question, uh, you know, I'm not an easy aesthetician, I'm not a dermatologist. So I, if someone, someone just asked me a question, what can I use for dark circles? I don't know. I mean, I don't know your history. I don't know anything like that. So I can only recommend ingredients. Um, a lot of things sometimes has to do with diet. Um, sometimes as we get older, <laughs> that skin changes. So um, dark eye circles. I don't know if it was eye circles. I think it, they just said dark circles. So uh, same thing. I would say ingredients that help with uneven skin. Um, I want to say, as long as inflammation on your skin, I would say... I know turmeric is really good. Lemon, depending on what you're using. Um, I know kojic acid, that's what I've been using. What else? Um, I haven't used the Arbutin. I haven't used this one. I haven't used that, so I can't really say. Yeah, if, if whoever asked the question, if you look at Christie's comment, she says she would choose the trans, is it transamic acid over mulberry extract, or you can use both of them together. Yeah, I think one thing, if I don't know the per, I think whoever asked the question, I think your comment, your thing had uh, homemade soaps and stuff. I don't know if it's for soap making or just for regular skincare. Uh, I think a lot of times, what I've noticed with a lot of. Um, active ingredients or even extracts or things that for me my skin I've had a lot of success with using extracts but that's usually in like my leave-on products like my serums um, toners and things like that or things I'm leaving on my skin not necessarily a rinse of product but I still I still think even if you use extracts in rinse of products yeah it's still good for your skin but you get better benefits with leave-on products Yes.
Layla's mom homemade stuff, soups and stuff. Yes. She said, I'm trying to make a kojic acid serum, but I only have kojic acid, the palmitate. Do I need to use oils? You need something to, because it's oil soluble, to dissolve it in. Yeah. Yeah, you do need something to dissolve. It's oil soluble. You can't just, you need some kind of oil to dissolve it in. Because it's not water soluble. The kojic acid, the palmitate is oil soluble. Regular kojic acid that's not very stable is water soluble. Dainty, I don't know. The ingredient that you think is best, I don't really have an ingredient that's best. Um, for me right now, I guess my two favorite ingredients would be turmeric and kojic acid, the palmitate. Those are the two things I'm using actively for my, the areas I'm targeting. So kojic acid, um, kojic acid, I feel has been the best thing for me. I can't really speak on other things I've not used, so I'm trying to type it. So kojic acid, the palmitate, and turmeric. Those are the two things I'm using for my any area that's uneven. And like I said, a lot of times with uneven skin, it's not always, you know, my skin, when I was in my 20s, I felt like my skin was perfection. I didn't even use, I, I don't think I really used anything for my skincare routine <laughs> when I was in my 20s, even in my 30s. I just washed my face. That's, I don't think I even used toners or serums. So a lot of times as you get older, your skin is going to change. No, I cannot, I cannot advise you if it's going to be safe. But for me, I would say, then she said, is it safe to combine lemon, turmeric, abutin, and kojic acid? This is what I advise anyone to do. When you're working with anything active, I say study for yourself and also learn and understand those ingredients. So something like lemon and turmeric, I'm okay probably combining the two, but you also have to realize that lemon and turmeric, the, you're going to have some type of photosensitivity to the sun. So you want to be careful when you're using that. Even the same thing with kojic acid. For me personally, I would not combine all four, but that's just me. Um, I would pick one. I might choose something like maybe kojic and turmeric or abutin. And I would not use all four. I would not use all four. I would say, I think that's always the danger. Some, you know, when formulating, some people just want to put every single thing. I had someone reach out to me and ask me about like five different actives. There is no reason to have two actives. You can have one main active ingredient and then you can now fill in the rest of those ingredients with either extracts or other things or herbal extracts, but not having so many actives. That's the truth. I mean, everybody wants to, you know, and I get a lot of questions like that. I'm like, no, you really should understand those ingredients for yourself. Um, but my personal, if I'm formulating, I would never combine abutin, kojic acid, because kojic acid, the palmitate, is pretty strong. If you're using it, I'm not talking about kojic acid. I'm talking specifically about KAD, kojic acid, the palmitate. That is pretty strong. So I, I don't see the reason to have abutin there. Lemon to make, you know, that's a lot. That's, you know, but that's just me. I've never heard of resveratrol powder. Yeah, sorry. Contrary to what everybody you know, thinks, I don't know all the ingredients, <laughs> but I've never heard of that. Um, I've never heard of it being better than kojic acid. No, I've never even heard of the... I haven't, Leila's mom. I'll probably Google it. I'm actually going to put it in my notes and see. And if I do my research, and I, then I can always put it on the, pin it in the comments, but I haven't. Okay, so I'm going to get to questions in a second, more questions. But let me, there's something I wanted to address real quick. Um, because I have my notes. I don't want to just go off topic. But let me, I'll, I'll get some more questions. Uh, ex thank you, Christy, for saying that. If you're starting new in skincare, try to start with one active. Perf that's, you said it best. Christy, you'll be shocked at, I, I wish I could remember the comment. They had like five actives in a question I got. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't. Okay. Layla's mom, I see on both. Yeah, I, I don't really go by a lot of times Suppliers can recommend what they recommend, but you still have to have understanding of that ingredient. Yeah, I don't, I could care less what the supplier says. <laughs> yeah, 
you still have to, you still have to, if the supplier says it good, but I'm still going to go to a dermatology. So when I say like, if you go on Google and you just put like a dermatology, dermatology blog, a lot of times, I don't know, usually the top ones are highlighted and then the medical, um, the, uh, medical journals, then you can type that ingredient there. And then you also say, hi, Deborah. Then you also see what those dermatology groups are talking about, the medical. Don't, have, don't ever go only by the supplier. The supplier can recommend, but you still have to do your research. Yeah. It is preference, Deborah. Two actives, you can use, you know, you can use two actives if that's your preference at the most. But some people use more than two. That's where it gets it gets it gets worrisome and I saw something very interesting the other day a couple of days ago this person had niacinamide and vitamin C in the same product and I thought that was interesting for me because niacinamide is also pH sensitive vitamin C is very pH sensitive so I was curious as to why you had niacinamide. Hi, Mitch. How are you? So I was curious as to why they had niacinamide and vitamin C in one product. Because vitamin C, usually the pH is going to be very acidic. Either from 4 below or 4, maybe, I don't even know, 4.5 is pushing it. But 4 on the pH. And niacinamide, they recommend from 6. So I was like, why, would you, why do you have niacinamide and vitamin C in one product? So... At the end of the day, the reality is nobody can tell you how to formulate. You can study, you can take your courses, your classes, but the final responsibility falls on you as the formulator. I can tell you combine kojic acid, turmeric, whatever. Deborah can tell you combine this. Christy can tell you this, but you really have to know for yourself. If you're using it for just yourself, no big deal, but if you're selling, yeah. Yes, I think the lemon peel bioferment, yeah. The truth is, lemon, turmeric, kojic acid, they are all photosensitivity, true. But the key is use a sunscreen protector and move on. It's not that deep. I use it all the time. I use my kojic acid serum because most times I say, okay, use it at night. The truth is, if you're using anything that's photosensitivity or with, with that photosensitivity, just use a good sunscreen protector end of story and move on it doesn't have to be oh my gosh i'm scared of the sun i'm going to be burned <laughs> but you use use good spf and that's it yeah uh, i use um i got a, i got lemon extract i think it was from new directions and i don't think it's not any different from anything photosensitive as well you just have to use adequate precautions when you're using anything like that for your skin. That's all. Uh, okay, I've been getting a lot of questions about hard body butters. Hard body butters. Hard body butters. Somebody posted. I did a video sharing how to make your body butter less greasy. But I guess I still got questions about... Somebody posted, after whipping my body butter two hours later, it became crumbly. I think that was it. Yeah, I definitely need to look at the, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it, is it resveratrol? I've never heard of it or used it, so. Yeah. And my thing is, for me, and this is just my preference, I usually don't like to, because I, I try to think about my skin type, what my skin likes. So I'm not going to jump into 20 different ingredients just because, you know, this is, you know, so I kind of, kind of figured out what works for me, what works on my skin type. Uh, my skin doesn't like a whole lot of stuff. <laughs> I've tried, I've had, I've tried stuff, expensive serums. I've tried cheap serums. I've tried, yeah, and my skin really doesn't like a lot of, I tried a really expensive, well, well, I don't know if it's really expensive. It was like a hundred dollar serum and my skin really didn't like it. I was just like, okay, it's okay. And my skin, the serum, I think it was a basic serum that I made that had, I can't even remember, it was just something really basic with hyaluronic acid. I can't remember the extracts I used, but oh my, my, literally my skin is just like loving it. 
So you have to do what works for your skin. And it's not about the, it's not about using fancy ingredients. I guess that's the point I'm trying to make. Choose ingredients that tell a story. Choose ingredients that simplicity sometimes is key. You don't need a whole, a ton of, used, like I said, I've used expensive serums. My skin didn't change. I, didn't, I couldn't tell anything different, to be honest. A lot of these things, you also have to look at a lot of big brands. A lot of those extracts, they list like 10 extracts. But look at where the ingredients are ranked on the ingredient label. They're always towards the bottom. So that percentage of extracts, they may have 10 extracts. But they may be using it at 0 0.1, 0 0.2. <laughs> That's not going to do anything for your skin. So you have to also look at that too. Yes, some people forget to reapply their sunscreen. I'm guilty. I'm one of the guilty people. I never reapply my sunscreen. I know you're supposed to. But the thing is, I'm really not in the sun that much. I know that's a bad excuse. Well, yeah, you're supposed to reapply your sunscreen. But my thing is, uh, I think usually I do my sunscreen, do my skincare in the morning, wear my sunscreen. I'm just out very briefly, either to get the mail, come back. <laughs> I mean, those. I really don't. Yeah, I'm not really out like that. But yeah, you are supposed to reapply your sunscreen. Okay, so hard body butters. If anybody asked the question, I don't know if you're in the group, but when you're making your body butter, because somebody posted, oh, they tried to, I don't know what formula they followed because the body butter video I posted sharing my tips and tricks, I didn't give a formula. I just said you can try these formulas. To make good body butters that don't turn to rocks, because I get that question. It is your recipe, it is your formula. If you use a, okay, if you use a high percentage of butters, a higher ratio, let's say you use 80% of butter to 20% of oils, you're going to have a firmer, more solid butter. But now, this is the thing, if you're using hard, a hard butter like cocoa butter, uh, maybe mango butter is harder than shea butter, maybe cocoa butter, if you use hard butters, it, it doesn't matter how long you whip, you can whip for five hours and it's going to be fluffy. But the reality is it's going to return back to its, its natural state of, of hardness. I hope that makes sense. So no matter how hard you whip cocoa butter. So if I make a body butter, for example, that is, let's just say 80% cocoa butter and 20% oils. Right? That's just, this is a horrible formula. But if I make a, 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 a body butter that's 80% cocoa butter, 20% oil, there is no amount of whipping. You can whip this bad boy five times, re whip it. It's going to be a hard butter. It doesn't matter. You, you can't get cocoa butter to be soft. It doesn't. Now, but if you have maybe a formula like maybe 40% cocoa butter, to 60% oils, then you're gonna have a softer butter. It's gonna be a softer finished product because you have more oils. So a lot of times I get these questions and I'm just like, you need to figure out what, what you're choosing. Then if your body butters are super greasy, it could be your oil combinations. Um, I think I said that in the video. Um, I'm kind of tired of answering the same question <laughs> over and over, like it's like, if I don't know your formula, like you're telling me, hey, my body butter gets crumbly. What's happening? I don't know your formula. I don't know what, what, what ingredients you used. I'm not a magician. And I get those questions so, so often I'm tired. So choose the right combination of plant butter. Shea butter is probably one of the best butters you can use. It's not a hard butter. It melts on contact. Um, mango butter, I don't mind using mango butter, but it's still a harder butter. So I don't use as much. And then just choose nice oils. So that, that's that on hard butters. Hopefully that helps. And also over whipping your body butter, you can also have crumbly body butters as well. So don't over whip. If you're making body butters, I don't know how people are making body butters, but for me, I don't whip that long. I, it's really a quick process for me. I think what takes the longest time is freezing my mixture. Just don't over whip. Choose a good combination of butter. My favorite butter to use is shea butter. I like mango butter. I like um, there are other soft butters. There's aloe vera. What else? Hemp butter. There are many butters that are soft. Anyway, so that's that on that. And then I'll, somebody asked about preservatives too, but let me see. 
Christie's Home Lab, Layla's mom, Kojic Acid and Niacinamide, they work differently, all on different levels. Avocado butter is also very lovely. I love avocado butter. I used to use it a lot before when I started making body butters, but I removed it eventually. It's really, I love avocado butter. It's really lovely. Yeah, I think one question that I got asked also, I saw, I saw somebody put, um, I think it was in a YouTube video I saw, recommended, I don't know, but I saw something where there was a vitamin C black soap, African black soap. How are you having a vitamin C African black soap product? I'm not understanding. Or, or uh, black soap with niacinamide. Yeah, niacinamide works amazing for your skin. But the recommended, I know most suppliers are bought from, they recommend a pH of at least six. So if you're using niacinamide in black soap that has a high pH, I'm not really sure why. Yeah, I'm not really sure why. I guess the point is if you're using actives, just no, no study about actives. Whatever active you want to use, understand the role they play, the skin type, understand how to formulate with it. I think that's the key. It's not just, hey, I want to use this active, but do you understand what it does for the skin? Do you understand side effects? Do you understand, you know, I think a lot of times people just want someone to give them an answer. And honestly, there are many times I don't feel like studying. There are many times I'm just like, I'm done. But we, we really have to, you know, if you're just making stuff for yourself, yeah, you can take the risk. But if you're selling stuff, if you're selling stuff to people, you definitely want to be, be careful. Um, but yeah, I'm sure Dainty, you'll figure it out for sure. But um, I would say just start with, like, I think Deborah, I don't know who suggested it, start with like one or two um, actives. And somebody asked if they could use Liquid Gemo Plus in a lip balm. No, you cannot use Liquid Gemo Plus. Liquid Gemo Plus is not oil soluble. Um, so if you're making, um, if you're making, um, let's just say oil, so oil products like, what do you think about lycopene? So I don't know what that is either. Whoever knows in the comments can answer. Dainty asks, what do you think about lycopene? Mm -mm. So if you're making oil soluble, if you're making um, products like scrubs, lip scrubs, lip balms, that, that, complete, that have only oils, you really don't need a preservative as long as you don't get water introduced. Like if I make a lip balm that only has oils, I'm not going to add a preservative. I mean, it's in a tube, it's, I'm using it on my lips. The chances of water getting in, I mean, I don't, you don't need a, you don't need a preservative for a lip balm. Um, if you have a, even lip, um, body oil, face oils, body butters, for some reason people keep asking, Christy, I thought maybe you knew all the ingredients. I've never heard of lycopene. <laughs> I was like, maybe it's just me. <laughs> um, but if you're formulating with, if you're making body butters, scrubs, lip balms, face oils, okay, anything that is just oils or butters, no water, you really don't need a preservative as long as you don't get water in it. Um, but if you're making something like a body scrub, a lot of times I'll add a preservative for the ones I sell. But if I'm making for home use, I really don't bother. I think on Institute of Personal Care, they had something on their... Oh, lycopene in tomatoes. Yeah, but do you... Lycopene as in, is it an extract? Like which, what form are you using it in? Yeah, you have to be more specific. Like what do you think about lycopene? Yeah, it's in tomatoes, but what form? <laughs> I think Formulator Sample Shop has some tomato type product. I can't remember what form. Either in a, I want to say it's in an extract type form because I was researching for someone. Yeah, but it, 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 was, it, 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 it was listed as tomato though. 
It wasn't listed as lycopene on their website. Um, so if you're looking for, I will say for oil soluble preservatives, you can research these if you want to try these out. So once again, if I'm making like my face oil, body oils, you really don't need a preservative for those. Anything that doesn't have water in it doesn't need a preservative. But if it's going to have a lot of water contact, which would be a, a sugar scrub, then you might want to add a preservative. But I think on Institute of Personal Care, one of the things I saw was, and I have to see if I can find it to link it, if it's 5%, less than 5% water um, in that product, um, where it's mostly oils, like let's say you make a sugar scrub and all the water based ingredients are less than 5%. You don't need a preservative. I mean, it, that's on Institute of Personal Care. But the rule of thumb for me is um, anything that's oil soluble or oil based ingredients, just you don't really need a preservative. You know, that's, that's it. But anyways, I put a list of oil soluble preservatives that you can look at. Those are the ones I think. Tristat Eco is natural, the rest are synthetic. All right, I think I've answered that. So body borders, I had a list I was trying to go over. So I had the, I think I've answered everything on my list. Let me see. Okay, which other question does anyone have? So what are you, I guess dainty. I think one thing I noticed a lot of times, I feel like, I'm going to say this really nicely. <laughs> I feel like you're all over the place with ingredients. You know why I say that? If you're, for me, I think I've been formulating, this is like going into, I think a little over three years. There are so many things I'm still trying to even get as a formulator, like my core basics down, where, you know, your formulating products, stability is a big thing. So if you're formulating with all these ingredients and your products are not stable, that's a big thing. Um, make formulate using the preservatives correctly all those things you know make sure that all those you have that down too it's not always only about the ingredient okay it's everything everything combined you need to yeah i think that'll be one thing i think if you go on formulator sample shop they have something that is a tomato based extract i can't remember what it's called but they do have something on there yeah but I know it's, it's good though for, I want to say, even with the, I want to say like glowing skin, helping to, I think everything claims to glow and brighten up the skin until <laughs> you actually use it. But anyways, does anybody, I think, I know Christy has a business. Who else has, Layla's mom's homemade stuff. Do you have a business? What, else, what do you guys use for your labels? I've been using online labels, but I'm curious to see what else. Do you outsource your labels, your label making? Does anybody use a cricket? I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. <laughs> Does anyone use a cricket machine? I'm curious. So I think with formulating the key is set goals for yourself and I think learn, I guess learn, learn at your own pace in the sense of don't think if one person is formulating with 20 different actives, you have to hop on that train. I think whatever you, whatever you know, you're learning, learn it well, learn it well. So that way you're sure of what you're doing. I think I got everyone's question. Okay, I guess nobody nobody uses a cricket. <laughs> Ask if anybody if anybody outsources their if anybody has their business and they are make their labels or they outsource their labels. I use online labels, but I'm always looking going into the new year looking for something easy. Ha <laughs> ha queen of body queen of but of butter. Ha 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 very funny, Christy. 
I'm very passionate about body butters. One thing I can't stand is rock hard body butters. Yeah. You bought one? What do you mean you just, I just got one today. From where, Mitch? Where did you get one from? I'm supposed to have a body butter ebook coming. I've just been so, you know. Do you like the cricket? I've been so I'm so tempted to get one. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you meant, Christy, the queen of body butter. Yeah, I love I love body butters that remain you know, somebody they keep asking in my when I post my reels, sorry, not reels, my YouTube shorts. Um does it get hard? It's not going to get rock hard. It's going to it's going to firm up because it's butter. Yeah, if you take a regular butter that you use on your food, on your food, and you bring leave it out on your countertop, and it gets room temperature, it's going to be soft, right? If it gets cold again, like put it in your fridge, it's going to get harder. Yeah, but you should never have a body butter that you're struggling to scoop out. That that is not the body butter I ever sell. All my body butters, yeah, when you whip it, it's going to be light and fluffy. But once it sets up, it's going to be firm. But it's, once you dig your finger in, it's going to be fluffy. I think I have a demo, but I think it's on my Instagram page. I have a demo showing a body butter I made. Um, I did a couple of, I think like it was a couple of weeks test just to show the texture. Yeah, I had the, the cricket. Uh, I don't know if I'm saying it right. The cricket is supposed to be, it's supposed to be easier. Like I, I do all my, I do my labels from, I have some labels that are pre, I don't know, they're pre cut i don't know if that's the right word um so i don't have to cut them but i have some i have to cut so it's it gets very annoying having to cut those so that would be the only reason to get the cricket for me anyways but i missed a really good sale when they had one and then i think it was sold out that's cool so what else is anyone formulating what are what is, uh, I think I had everything. So, somebody, so I think what cracks me up on some of, the, some of the videos I post, if I post a video, for example, that is tips and tricks, like I have a video I posted, I think it was tips and tricks for how to make lotions and creams. So if I post, if I post, it cracked me up. If I post a video that says, hey, tips and tricks, that video is going to be my tips and tricks that I use when making lotions and creams. So somebody posted in the comment, oh, without a formula, there's no use for this video. I thought that was so funny. <laughs> it's like, I do have, I think I have like three or four videos on my channel, how to make lotions and creams with formulas. So I just, I just thought it was funny though. Yeah. Oh, it's crazy out there on online and social media. I've been trying to post more on um, TikTok. Uh, I'm trying to post on all social media platforms. Uh, I think I posted, I posted, <laughs> I posted a TikTok uh, for my body butter, body butter, making my body butter. And usually those videos are like 30 seconds long. And one of the comments was, can I have the ingredients? I'm just like, it's just so funny. Like, yeah, obviously it's, it's a business, it's a product I'm trying to sell. I just thought it's funny, like we just cannot help ourselves. Yeah, just take it easy with the black owned businesses. We're trying, we're trying to get that, trying to get that money. And this market is so crazy. Just trying to hustle, get sales and everything. It's not, it's not always easy. So if somebody has perfected a product that they sell, please don't ask them to give, them, give you the formula. That's just, you know, unless they want to share it. Yeah, Mitch. Mitch said, I like making emulsified body butters and lotion sticks. I want to get into lotion sticks. I made, it, I made one. I've only made it like once or twice. Yeah, but I actually, like, I actually like the lotion sticks. Emulsified body butters I like. I like doing those. For sure. And you can customize, you know, you can... The beauty about formulating is you can customize... You know, you say formula you like, switch out the oil, switch out the emulsifying wax. So it's always, I think that's always the good thing with, with formulating. You don't have to, 
box yourself into a corner. But I saw something quite interesting. Um, I saw a body butter because I was researching certain ingredients, certain oils. And there was this body butter that I saw that was not emulsified, but it was a body butter with colloidal oats and what else? Colloidal oats. They had essential oils, they had shea butter and a couple of other things. And usually when I use it, when I use colloidal oats, I use it as a, in my creams, washes, because it's, it's water soluble. But what I thought was interesting was um, the supplier, one of the suppliers, I think Wholesale Supplies Plus, I buy colloidal oats from them. And in their questions, they have a Q&A section for that ingredient. Somebody asked, can I, put, can I use this colloidal oats in a whipped body butter? And they said, yes, you actually can use colloidal oats which I thought was interesting because it's water soluble. But yeah, this, this, in this brand, I saw their line of products and I was like, wow, I was really inspired. I don't know if I remember what they are, but they did have something with colloidal oats. I'm looking to make some more things with like honey, um, manuka honey specifically. Do you mean, who makes good, great body butter? Do you mean me, Deborah? I try, my, my first early set of body butters were horrendous. <laughs> And I actually started my, my business, so I like to see my journey, how far I've come. If you look at my Instagram page, 2020, end of 2020, you look at my early body butter pictures, they were, not, they were just not pretty. And I thought they were the best thing ever. I, you couldn't tell me my body butters were not the best. I was like, yeah, I started my business, come try my body butter. But those things were, they were not the previous things. <laughs> and, you know... I've, I've reformulated my body butter. I've done it. Even, even when I started my business, when I was thinking about starting my business, I, took, I sent samples to a few people. I think like 10 people. Some people from church, some friends I had. And the, what I sent them is not even the formula I use today. I started out making my body butters with coconut oil. Um, I think I was using av avocado butter, I think. Uh, what else was I using? Grapeseed oil, olive. My body butter has evolved. So, yeah. So, yeah, it can evolve. Yeah, Christy's channel is really cool. Yeah, Christy, Christy is like a real cosmetic scientist. Like, she has, a, she has everything. I'm like, yeah, the aesthetics is very nice. <laughs> she has very nice aesthetics. Yeah, usually that's, that's all I've used, the oatmeal, is in water-based. I, I made a sensitive skin body wash. That's a lot of my Patreon, though. And I used colloidal oats, and I used, I think I had honey in it. Oof. I used that in the shower. That stuff is really good. Colloidal oats is really good. And it's a very inexpensive ingredient, too. That's the crazy thing. <laughs> Christy, are you laughing? Yeah. I have several videos I'm working on. I have, uh, I think I have like four videos I've filmed. I just haven't edited them. I made a black soap wash, which you can use for your hair and your skin. And it is really, really good. That's probably my, I want to say that's probably one of my best black soap washes I've formulated. It's really, really good. <laughs> cool. Let me not brag <laughs> to maybe I make the video and people are like, this is crap. No, it's actually really good. Um, I used to use black soap a lot. Then I kind of eased back on black soap. But I've always used it. I always used to use it as... That was the only shampoo I was using for my hair because I have scalp psoriasis. And that's literally the only thing that helps. So I kind of took a break from the black soap. And I was using other shampoos. And my scalp psoriasis really just flared up. Has been flaring up really, really bad. So I switched back to black soap. So that video, hopefully, I'll have it on Christmas Day. If not, it's going to be next week. But I already have the video filmed. I just haven't edited it or done the voiceover. Oh, yes. Mitch, yes. Mitch said, I use colloidal oats in my soaps. Oh, absolutely. Sugar scrubs, yes. I won't try it in the body butter next, yeah. Yeah, I like the colloidal oats um, in soap for sure. I don't use it in all my, sugar, all my sugar scrubs. I think I only use it in my sensitive skin scrub, the colloidal oats. 
But yeah, it's, it's definitely a very versatile ingredient. I'm looking at the comments. That's why I'm looking down. Does anyone have any other questions? This weather is cold outside. Mama wants to go take a nap. Christy said, I love using oatmeal powder when making my baby cream. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I think, yeah. Oatmeal is just, you know, I think I'm leaning more now to formulating more with oat, uh, well, colloidal oats, oatmeal. Because technically, you know, I'm like, okay, um, when you Google like just eczema or the main company that pops up is um, this company that has the B logo. I think eczema, um, oh God, they're very popular. Something Honey Company, I don't remember their name, but they're about the only one that really come up when you, if you just put eczema. So I'm like, okay, I have eczema, scalp psoriasis. So I need to formulate more, you know, those more of those products. Yeah, for myself and also try to get a new target market for my, for my business. Yeah, because they're fun to create. So many things. I literally was, after I used my black soap um, wash, I washed, I, uh, for, I washed my hair. And I was like, oh, wow, this, I started thinking of a formula. Like, okay, I could make a mask with colloidal oats. Probably have it where I don't use clay. Because colloidal oats on its own, it's amazing. You can see it helps to also absorb, like, excess oil from your skin. So I was like, huh, it doesn't always have to be clay. Colloidal oats is much easier to preserve than clay. So, okay, I started thinking of a formula in my head. Like, oh, what can I add to this? And... Yeah, it's definitely interesting using colloidal oats. Oh, thank you, Anila. Your emulsified body butter is too good. Oh, I don't know which one, but yeah, I think I have like two. I have a turmeric one and I have a regular one. Thank you. Yeah, that. I like it. I like it's on the thick side, so I like I like using that. It's almost like using a body butter, but just a, a thick cream. Yeah, hopefully you guys have a good, you know, Christmas. If you celebrate Christmas, you know, good Christmas um, celebration and wonderful New Year ahead. Because I'm not gonna, I'm gonna do another live till probably maybe I don't know, sometime in January. I'm trying to do two a month, but we'll see. Oh my gosh, negative three in Northwest Indiana. Oh wow. And I'm over here with my sweatshirt in, what's our temperature? We're 27 degrees here in Texas. <laughs> okay. In I'm, Austin, Texas. Uh, don't mind my watch. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I, I, can't, I can't see anything else. <laughs> Minus three. Oh, wow. Stay warm, Mitch. Yeah, it's I think it's cold all over America, honestly. Oh, I knew that you haven't tried the turmeric. Oh, yeah, the, it's still the same. It's still the same thing. The only difference is I added uh, turmeric. I think I added turmeric um, extract. That's the only difference. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. Anyways, guys, I said I was going to make this live long because Mama's tired. Um, but yeah, I think that's everything I had. I mentioned the preservatives. We talked about the actives. Body butter, what else? Um, labels. I'm, I'll look at the. <laughs> I know 27 degrees. I know. I feel so ashamed because I've been whining like, oh gosh, it's so cold. <laughs> That's why I have on this jacket and I have on my long socks and I'm like free. I have the heater going and I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't envy you at all. Yeah, I, I would have no, I, I couldn't. Yeah, we were all like. Stressed out. Uh, I think I have a face cream. I have a face moisturizer somewhere. I think I do. But I'm probably going to make formula. I, have, I don't have like a, yeah, I don't think I have like a dedicated like face cream. I have like a lightweight face moisturizer. So yeah, I could probably work on a face cream. Yeah, I'm trying to dupe Aveeno. There's a, a cream Aveeno makes that I want to dupe. And I think it has oats and something else. But yeah, yeah. I have a bunch of videos that I, I'm wanting to do for, for I'm going to make it enough for next year. I try to think of 
creative um, videos. But then my analytics always tell me they just like the body butter videos. And I cannot make a body butter video every single time. <laughs> I have to diversify. Oh, do you mean the black soap? Christy, do you mean the black soap powder? Uh, I think I used to have it in eight ounce, but I'm, I don't have my, my eight ounce jars. That's what happened. I think I only have four. I think I only have four ounces. I think I have to check. Yeah, I'm going to discontinue. I think once I sell whatever I have left of my black soap powder, I'm not going to carry it anymore. I'm, I know I'm going to carry a... I'm, my, I'm, going to, I'm thinking of um, carrying a black soap bar, but not just the regular black soap bar. It's going to have something else in it, and then a liquid black soap. But right now, I think I only have the four ounce black soap powder. That's what's left. Okay, Mitch Mitchell, you have some hyaluronic acid that you like to use in a cream. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, hyaluronic acid is definitely very cool. A little goes a long way, depending on which one you're using. Yeah, Chrissy, yeah, I think I only have the four ounce left. I don't have any more. Eight. I never had the 16 ounce. I always had, I, I had the four ounce, eight ounce, the eight ounces where what people were buying, that's why I ran out of it. And I just have the four ounce, like the, the jars I used for the black soap um, powder, I used the amber jars. And I think, yeah, when I ran out of all my eight ounce jars, I didn't replace them. I just wanted to clear what I had, yeah. But I think, um, I think 3KG, I think 3K, I don't know if I'm saying their name right. I think 3KG, they have it in a larger size. I like them. They have really qu good quality, like black soap, um, shea butter, things like that. Yeah, I think they have it in a larger size, Christy, if you want to check them out. Hi, Eukarya. I'm not really sure how to clear your dark circles because different things could cause dark circles. But we talked, I think earlier on, we talked about um, for like hyperpigmentation. Earlier in the chat, and I think we talked about, um, I think some of the ingredients we talked about were kojic acid, dipalmitate, and turmeric were the key ingredients. And then sometimes dark circles could be different things, lack of sleep, diet, aging. I'm not saying that's you, but I know for me, that's what causes <laughs> my dark circles are more prominent in the morning for me. Um, so yeah, I know kojic acid, dipamitate, turmeric, but I don't know, um, yeah, it's kind of hard for me to, to tell you what, yeah. Yeah, I think there were also, also other ingredients suggested early on, but I think if, we, if you look at the beginning of the chat, that's what we talked about. Let me see, what else did we talk about? Yeah. Yeah, I would, I would try the... Yeah, I would try the, at least the kojic acid and turmeric for sure. Because I know the dark areas I've used them on my skin, with the exception of under my, um, where I wear my glasses, everything cleared up for me. Yeah. Mitch, um, Mitch, if you're going to use hyaluronic acid, you know there are different variations. Um, I personally like the low molecular weight, but I know people, the main people use the, the high molecular weight. Um, I like the low molecular weight. Um, I feel like they say it absorbs, penetrates your screen quicker, and you, you actually need much less. I think it's more, I, I don't know if it's more expensive than the high molecular weight one, but I know you need much less of it. Much, much less. But either, either whichever hyaluronic acid you decide to use, just, yeah, it should be okay. So anyone have any more questions? Yeah, if it's the low one, yeah, cool. I know when I made my toner, I think I just mixed it in glycerin. Some people put, you can put it either in the, oh yeah, you're welcome. It, it, I think it's just preference. The high molecular weight one, I think some people like to use it because it gels. So if you're making something where it, like, I think gels or helps to 
picking up a little bit, but if, if it's in the cream, I don't think it matters. Yeah. Yes, it's expensive, but you need much less. That's why I like it. So I think the toner I used, it, I think I used like 0 0.5 or something. I, I don't even know if I use 0 0.5, but the low molecular weight one, you, you actually end up using way less and it penetrates the skin better. I've used um, hyaluronic acid. This is a serum I, I got as a gift. And I think it, I think that was, a, I don't know. I don't know what hyaluronic acid weight they used. But the toner that I made, the gel toner that I used, I noticed the difference instantly. Because when I put that, the gel toner that I used, and I used the other one, yeah. The HM, I think the high molecular weight one is cheaper, but you need more. I think it goes up to as high as 2%, but the low molecular weight, it doesn't. You need very little, and it's very, very strong. So for me right now, I don't have any hyaluronic acid that I sell. I don't think, I don't know that I plan on, on carrying any hyaluronic acid thing anytime soon. Um, but then you never know. Yeah, I think I'm, yeah, I think I'm really trying to really stick to a lot of the basics. And I don't want to be jumping around. I think if anything, I just formulate those DIYs for myself. Yeah. I think you have to look at, cost where you're buying certain ingredients the uh depending on how you're going to resell it though you guess the per unit cost dollar cost and see if it's worth it for you yeah so i hope that helps if anyone had a question um yeah hopefully that helps um i'll see if i can find i'll post i'll post um I think I got a question about some of the, I'm trying to look at my notes, some of the formulating resources that I post. I, I, unless the links are broken, I don't know. Usually everything I post on the, in the description box usually is the most current link that I have for formulating resources. So Formulation resources I post are typically preservative resources because those are, that's where I get the most questions on preservatives. And I posted the Institute of Personal Care Science, that formulating book that I bought. And I think I have the link for my course and my preservative workshop. I think that's everything. And I, I, I think I posted a preservative video from another third party. But yeah, I think that's everything I typically post. But either way, uh, I think I'm done with all the things I have. Um, hopefully for the new year, because I have gotten, I'm, I'm trying to work on it. Hopefully this holiday period where, uh, before everything gets, goes crazy. Um, I've been trying to finish the, uh, like two eBooks that I was asked to do. Um, or they asked if I was going to have one, but it's kind of hard to do. It's like a body butter eBook because I don't know everyone can pay for the course or the the, the, I don't know if call it a course, body butter workshop. Um, so it's obviously going to be cheaper to have the ebook, and it's always going to be cheaper when you have an ebook. So hopefully, those will be available at some point. <laughs> I'm no longer giving dates because every time I give a date, I never have it. Uh, Christy, I don't understand. You care? I said, try and use your face cream. Has a eye cream if it doesn't contain AHA acid or very strong acid ingredients in it. Mm. I'm not sure. I've tried a bunch of eye creams in the past. Um, I, I, for me, I have. Um, I don't have dark circles, but I have like puffy eyes under my under eyes which i've had as since i was a baby so um i know the puffy eyes and dark circles are different yeah i'm not sure what, i don't know what you mean try to use your face cream if it has an eye cream Contain AHA acid. but a lot of times the yeah i think yeah a lot of times it, it, that's really the best thing <laughs> nobody can really tell you how to fix you know fix something 
for me, for years, I had like my skin till I saw a dermatologist and they said, oh yeah, your eczema is hormonal from pregnancy. I never had that, you know, so I was trying different natural, different remedies, nothing was working. And I went to the dermatologist and I'm like, yeah, this is what it is. So now I, now I know what it is or what caused it. So you're going to have flare ups and things. Yeah. Even, even dark, sometimes it's like um, health related. Even like I was reading about even dark knuckles. It could be health, you know, just this is just a, as an aside. Yeah, I think it, you can never look to someone on YouTube to tell you <laughs> what to do for your skin. You can always take everything with like, okay, a pinch of salt, but you still have to, you know, final responsibility also falls on you and making sure that you're doing what's best for your skin. That's why I say when, when people ask me, oh, can I combine this, this and that? I say with formulating, you just, you need to really understand your ingredients. And the reality is, there are so many ingredients out there. I've never formulated with glycolic acid. I'm not, I mean, I, had, I have some of those ingredients. I just haven't. Glycolic acid, salicylic acid, all that. Most times I always try the natural alternative first. But I will have some formulations. A lot of times why I don't really mess with those things, I just will do it for a DIY or do it for YouTube. But on the daily... That's not something I'll use for my skin. I'm not a fan. I mean, glycolic acid, I mean, they're all okay to use if you want to, but I try to be as authentic and realistic because the truth is I'm not going to use 10 different things on my face. I try to stick with what works for me. So if you're making your DIYs, you're making things for yourself, stick with what works for your skin type. Everyone's skin type is different. You know, face, I have combination oily skin. Rest of my body, I have sensitive eczema prone skin so you have to kind of use what works for you and use ingredients accordingly but um if no one has any other questions hopefully we all will all achieve all our formulating goals and dreams for the new year ahead and we just you know continue to thrive and grow as a youtube community online but i'm definitely thankful for the support and grateful for everyone that always joins in yay yeah i'm beating everyone adieu too i'm tired i must bid you adieu all happy holidays everyone i appreciate your lives looking forward to more <laughs> same to you mitch have a wonderful holiday anyways if nobody has any other question um guys don't forget to like the live or whatever like like the live or um if anyone has any other question hopefully this helps i don't know if what we talked about helps but i'm going to log off i think i got everyone's question all right friends wishing you a wonderful new year ahead wonderful holiday and i'll see you in the next live if nobody has any other question i'm about to log off All right, I don't see any questions. Hopefully I don't miss anyone, anyone's question, okay. All right, friends, I'll see you in the new year, God willing. Pray to God to keep us all safe, healthy, our families, wishing you all blessings. And I will hopefully have a video on Sunday. If not Sunday, it might go up Thursday, which is not my regular schedule, but have a wonderful, wonderful Christmas if you celebrate Christmas. And I'll see you in the next live. Bye.